Hello and welcome to our Brunau webinar, Five Steps to Becoming a Teacher. My name is Katie and today I will be moderating our webinar. Um, so let's go ahead and cover the agenda and I'll tell you a little bit about what you can expect to learn today. So again, we are covering the five steps that you'll take here at Brunau to become a teacher. And we'll first talk about the accelerated courses that you that you'll learn uh, that you'll that you'll take here at Brunau. Now, if you're an adult student and you're coming back to to school after a break, these are probably a little bit different than what you experienced uh, a while ago. So our success co our enrollment coaches will talk you through what they're like and how they're different. After that, they will talk about the GACE exam and assessments that are required by the state of Georgia uh, to become a teacher, and they'll help you understand how Brunel prepares you for them. They'll also talk a little bit about how you earn clinical hours and gain hands-on experience through student teaching. And then of course, we'll talk a little bit about employment projections for teachers here in Georgia. After all of that, we will have a live Q&A session where our uh, hosts will answer your questions on the spot. So speaking of q and I'd like to draw your attention to the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions, go ahead and click on that button and then type your question in there and our hosts will answer them during the Q&A session. Now, speaking of our hosts, I would like to introduce you to them. Today, we are joined by two of Brunau's finest. We have Talise Clark and Melody Thomas, who are both enrollment coaches here. These ladies are your elementary education experts here at Brunau. Uh, they will help you through the application process uh, when you call, and they will also be able to kind of describe the program to you, answer all of your burning questions, and make sure that you are set up for success. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and turn the time over to Melody, and she's going to take it away. Hi, Katie. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today and give you a little bit of information on Brunel and our um, quality programs that we have um, in our education area. Um, for Brunel, you can actually be a student who is in one of the only 100% online degree programs in Georgia that leads to certification. I do tell my students that, you know, there's a lot of choices out there for colleges, but when it comes to specific degree programs and specific careers, you want to make sure that you're starting out out of the gate in one that's going to help you reach your end goal. That would be Brunel's elementary education program. We do offer um, our students the quality experiences in classroom, um, format, but online. So 100% online and you can go right through the program and be certified as a teacher in the state of Georgia. This does include your um, student teaching component. Um, another thing about Brunel is our um, curriculum. Again, as noted, the curriculum base is 100% online. We do have experts who constantly and consistently review data from the market areas, from the districts, Department of Education, Georgia Professional Standards, to make sure that the skills that these districts and the requirements for the Georgia Professional Standards are met and taught in our elementary programs. Your instructors, let's go into a little bit of that. Um, you will be learning from experts. These are experts who have been in the field of education. They may currently work in you know, education, higher education, they may be uh, professors, they may have years of experience in the elementary programs within the state of Georgia, everything that you're taught will lead you to certification. And it's taught in a way that is current, real-time um, projected curriculum. So when you go to do your student teaching component or you go to take your GACE exams, um, you are prepared and the outcome is no nothing less than what you would expect from a good quality degree program. Accelerated classes. 
what we mean by accelerated classes is you're taking two classes at a time. They're typically seven to 14 weeks in length. Then you typically have a one week break. You're going to be in school for two to three years for this degree. That does include all of your field experiences and your 16 week student teaching component. And after that, you are, you are certified to be a teacher in the state of Georgia. Um, again, these classes, the curriculum part is 100% online. What this means is very flexible hours to you. Um, this degree program is set out for our adult and graduate learners. What that means is most of the time, this may be a second career for students. This may be one where they've decided they've worked many, many years in the field that maybe wasn't their first choice. And now they want to get into the field that is their first choice, which is teaching. So the flexibility of being able to log on online when it is flexible for you during any time of the day, any day of the week, we don't require that you are on five days a week or seven days a week. What you have to do is set out a structure that is going to help you be successful while taking care of everything that else that's on your plate, life, kids, family, work, full time. So there's the flexibil flexibility of the two classes at a time, seven to 14 weeks, and then you've got the two to three years in the full program to become a certified teacher. When it says, you know, we talk a lot about accelerated classes, students are often confused. They think accelerated means I'm taking a lot of classes at one time. The demand for the um, time in class is just going to be too much. Accelerated classes, again, means that the program is specifically approved by the Georgia Professional Standards Commission. It is continuously reviewed and you're only taking courses that ensure you're receiving the skills and the classes necessary to graduate. You're not taking any filler classes because a class may not be um, available at that time. You are enrolled in a program that has a specific program plan for a specific end result and an end complete time. So um, again, a curriculum that is integrated and skills that are integrated into a program where you're learning up to date information that you will use as a current teacher when you are in the classroom. Communication. Um, the availability, the ability to effectively be able to reach out to instructors, reach out to classmates. Um, many have not taken online classes before, but what these classes do is give you the availability to be in an online classroom with the instructor's presence and the presence of other students. Some of the courses that you're going to take, they're going to teach you communication, the ability to effectively convey new information and concepts so you understand it. Those classes would be such as the LE300 conflict resolution class, the MM220 communication theory. Those will help you communicate the skills that you're learning within the program. A couple of other courses that you would take would be our planning 
classes. It's very, very important that you learn how to plan curriculum. Um, classes where you'll learn those would be the ED311, Effective Planning, Curriculum, Instruction, and Teaching. That's going to teach you how to plan the curriculum and effectively teach that curriculum within the classroom setting. Again, the ED 429 student teaching elementary education, pre-K through fifth grade. That's what you're going to, to learn the curriculum for. And these programs set out with different courses, this being one of the starting courses in that will teach you what is necessary to plan the curriculum and the teaching methods. Guided practice, interactive instruction where a teacher engages students in a similar task to what they will complete later in the lesson. And then they'll be able to do it in, independently. Teaching your students how to be independent and learn independently once you've given them the skills. ED 308, classroom management. Managing to those skills and managing the classroom based on the uh, interaction with the kids that you have and knowing their different skill levels. Literacy methodology for elementary education, teaching methodology, literacy, um, reading, all of the different types of um, informative materials that you're going to have to kind of reach out and direct students on how to read, how to write, how to manage their time um, effectively in the classroom. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to my co-host, Ms. Talise Clark. Thank you. So your next steps with admission um, would be to take the GACE exam. Um, the GACE is actually two different exams. Uh, one of them is the GACE program admissions assessment, and the other is the GACE content exams for early childhood education. The, the program admissions assessment comes before you start your core classes. Um, so you can start the program, but before you move into the teacher preparation program, you would um, have to have that GACE program admissions assessment passed. And then the second is the content exam, and that would need to be passed before you finish out your classes and move into student teaching. A part of this are um, Georgia's Professional Standards Commission's regulations and mandates. So as Melody mentioned, we will make sure within the program that all the qualifications for the state have been met. Then we have... Um, our, um, the, the certification is, is, is gays. Um, some teachers that are coming from maybe education backgrounds may have taken the praxis in the past. Um, so you would contact Georgia Professional Standards Commission to see if that would transfer over because those do sometimes transfer. Um, so we will make sure again, that all the certifying needs are taken care of um, as you matriculate through the program. Um, the GACE is basically high school level reading, writing, and math. It's an entrance exam. And um, you, with you being at, at the point of starting a bachelor's in elementary education, uh, if you've taken a college algebra in your past or even your English 101 and 102, you would definitely be prepared to take and pass the GACE program admissions assessment. Um, if not, there are definitely some um, free online tutorials available. Um, and as you matriculate through any prerequisite classes, that you may have, such as that English and the college algebra, then you definitely wanna go ahead and take those sections of the GACE um, program admissions assessment. They can be taken all together or they can be broken up where you can take each individual subject one at a time. 
And you know, even if you don't pass one section, you can take that one section again um, until you get it passed. The second exam for GACE is the GACE content. So after you have gone through the program and you've learned how to interact with children and you've learned how to teach e each subject, because as Melody said, it is P through five. So pre-K through the fifth grade. But as elementary teachers, they know how to teach all subject areas. So you'll be tested on all subject areas. And with that, the content is, is broken up into two different tests. Um, and you'll, it's, you know, you'll have two subjects in one and then two subjects in the other. And my motto has always been, after you take the Bernal class, take that portion of the GACE. That way, while you're in the classes, you're able to study the content for the GACE, and you also have some free help with the instructors that you're paying for with your Bernal classes. So that way, it, it increases your chances of passing it on the first time. Now, our Bernal students have a 100% uh, passing rate. And that's because in order to get through the program, you have to pass the GACE exam, both the content as well as the program admissions assessment. So you can matriculate through the program knowing that I'm gonna graduate and I will get my teaching certification because we will make sure that everything that's needed is completed within the program. A lot of schools can't say that. And that's why we, we rank so highly with Georgia Professional Standards Commission. Um, so when it comes to anyone that's looking to become a certified teacher within the state, you have um, highly qualified individuals in the core academic subjects. Um, that's what the GACE is, it will be testing you on. Um, and remember, it's not just, you know, two plus two is four or 10 times 10 is 100. It's being, you're being tested on how to teach those subjects. And that's what we'll be showing you within the program is how to become a, an effective and highly qualified teacher within the state of Georgia. Um, you have um, your written, your spoken, and your uh, assignments. You have your field, field experience placements throughout the program, and you also have student teaching, which all has its own levels of um, standards when it comes to uh, Georgia Professional Standards Commission. Now, when it comes to placements, you don't have to worry about it. We got you covered. Um, we're now, we'll get, get a wish list for, from you. And with that wish list, um, we'll try to place you near your work or near your home. And uh, we have a relationship with all the school districts in the state. So no matter where, if you were in the far, most northern corner of the state or right here in Metro Atlanta or uh, South Georgia, we have you covered. You do not have to travel far from your home. And we will make sure that your placements meet all the qualifying factors. Um, well, some, a lot of schools don't do that. So like I said, you can put your trust in Bernal knowing that we are taking care of you. Um, our students uh, matriculate through the program knowing that they don't have anything to worry about. Now with your student teaching, it is full time. It's at the very end of your program. Once your course is finished, you'll have your student teaching and it literally goes all the way up until graduation for one semester. Our students do not work during this time. Um, so it's about planning properly through your program to make sure that your basic needs and necessities are planned for. So you wanna save up during this time in order to prepare for your student teaching experience. Now I wanna say, Almost all of Bernal's graduates received their first job placement from their student teaching experience. 
Now, how many programs can say that I can actually do what I want to do or study, take a position in the field that I've studied almost immediately? Not very many people can say that, you know? So you are studying to teach, and this is what you will do in following the program. Um, because when it comes to certification, and since Brunel is recognized by Georgia Professional Standards Commission, your application gets fast tracked through the certification process. So if you are uh, slated for a spring graduation, our students are teaching with pre-planning that usually starts the end of June, beginning of July. That spring graduation is at the beginning of May. So you're walking across that stage, usually with a job offer that you can start within the next month or two. If you're slated for a winter graduation, that's usually the first week of December. Our students are starting teaching come January. There's not many fields that can say that. So you are spending your time and your efforts to actually get that job. And every time you step into a school as a Brunel student, that's a hiring opportunity. Because the eyes are on you. They know what to expect from Brunel students and they hold us in high regard. So you wanna take every opportunity to set, put your best foot forward because that first job offer could very well come from the school that you're in. Now, as I mentioned, um, Brunel has a relationship with every school district in the state. So there's no need to worry. We'll place you close to home. Um, you will also make sure that, um, that the school meets this, the, the standards, um, that you will get the best experience possible. Um, and when it comes to that wish list that I mentioned, where you can see yourself working, put that down for your student teaching experience because we'll try to make it happen for you. Nothing is guaranteed, but we will definitely try our very best. <clears throat> now, um, now that you've graduated, you've done your student teaching, guess what? It's time to work. <laughs> it's time to actually practice what you have been taught. Um, so in Georgia, Georgia, the starting median salary is about 58,000. It all depends on your district. Um, and with potential growth up to 2026, it's 15, it's a whopping 15%. One thing about education is you can always find a job. I haven't seen one school year that uh, on social media where someone hasn't posted, oh, I'm a principal at this school and uh, we're looking for this many teachers. Um, teachers move all the time. They move up out of state. They go on maternity leave. They, there's always something going on where more teachers are needed, including classroom growth, school growth. Because, you know, Georgia, we are constantly moving people in and not as many people are moving out. So those children have to be taught. and um, there are always positions available for teachers. Um, you know, I've even heard of some, some school districts giving signing bonuses as well. So you are choosing an industry where the need is great and the pay is great as well. And when it comes to planning your, um, your salary, you, know, you definitely wanna move on to maybe that master's to possibly get that salary increase within a year or two. That way you continue to prepare for not only right now, but you prepare for retirement as well. The more you make, the sooner, the more you make in retirement. And as you know, when you begin teaching, teachers tend to retire in that field. So there's a lot of benefits to staying in the industry. Um, and we will help definitely help get you there. Now, one of our, um, our, we have hundreds and hundreds of graduates 
from Brown that are placed all over the states in their own careers. Um, and we have a, a quote from one of our Brown graduates and it says, Brown helped me realize my passion for teaching and learning, which helped me to earn the Teacher of the Year Award. I would not be a teacher. Um, I am today if it were not for my experiences at Brown, which speaks volumes. You know, Brunel's main campus is located up in Hall County. And a couple of years ago, um, all of the teacher of the years at the schools within Hall County were, were Brunel graduates. So you see, you're getting, you will get top notch education top notch. It is definitely worth the, the climb because it, it is a climb, but it is worth every single step and you will definitely get the results. It's almost like exercise. They say you need to exercise three times a week and you'll see the results. Come through this program and you will definitely see the results and reap the benefits in the end. Thank you so much to Lise and Melody for um, lending your expertise to us today and sharing your experiences with us. I did not know that about the uh, teachers of the year. So I think it, <laughs> to, to Lise's point, that speaks volumes to the education programs that we have here at Brunel. Um, now, before we move on to our Q&A session, there are a couple of reminders. First of all, I see a few people who, who joined us a tiny bit late, which is fantastic. Welcome to our webinar today. As a reminder, we are going to move into our Q&A session, um, but at the bottom of the screen, you will see a Q&A button. If you have questions for Melody or Thelise, please go ahead and open that up, type your question in there, and they will try their best to answer them in just a moment. Um, before we move on, again, those reminders are, first of all, we have, we have a start coming up on January 11th which may seem far away, but I think that if 2020 has taught us anything, it is that time flies. Um, and so in just about two short months, we will be starting classes again. And now if you would like help inquiring about uh, Brunel or applying, or even if you've started your application, but you just have a few questions, certainly give our enrollment coaches a call at 888 Two six, I'm sorry, 867-2163. You can go ahead and email them as well at success at ags.brunow.edu. Now we have entered that into the chat. Uh, so you will probably see at the bottom of your screen, you see a chat icon with a red notification next to it. Click on that and you will find the phone number and the email address. So with that said, we are going to move into our Q&A session. And it looks like we've already gotten a few. Um, so I am going to ask Talise this question. So Talise, Lisa asks, is this the best route for me if I already have a bachelor's and a master's? Uh, Lisa, it may not be the best route for you. However, Brunel does have a master's of arts in teaching program that leads to certification. That may be a better route for you. A lot of the qualifications are the same depending on what level of education you wanna teach. Um, however, it, we do offer the program and it is completely online. It starts twice a year, which is January and August. So even if you're looking to start uh, your education soon, Lisa, it is not too late to move forward with a master's of arts in teaching program that leads to certification. Thank you, Talisa. And Lisa, we would encourage you to call the phone number um, that's in the chat. And one of our enrollment coaches can help you understand that Master of Arts in Teaching degree um, and kind of walk you through it to make sure that you are ready to, to become a teacher. Um, we have many education programs here at Brunel University um, for people in all stages of their academic career. So we will absolutely have something that can help you progress. So thanks for your question. Now, this next question I am going to send to you, uh, Melody. Um, this person says, what if they need help with their classes? They've been out of school for a while. Um, so what if they need help with something like a math class or, or maybe they're a little rusty on their writing, writing chops? What should they do? Yeah, that's a question that we get a lot because, you know, we do 
really reach out to our adult graduate study students. So again, these are students that have probably been out of class for a while um, and are feeling a little bit rusty and uncertain of themselves. And uh, we do have at Bernal, we have our tutoring um, links. Um, at Bernal, you may be doing your courses 100% online, but you're still part of the Bernal student body. So any of our resources, that our traditional students have, our online students taking their courses online will have as well. M the majority of all of those resources can be found on the Bernal internet, and that's internet.bernal.edu. Um, sorry, intranet, the intranet. Um, that houses everything Bernal. There are tutoring services, there's career centers, there's the student center, um, Every, every type of help that you would need. Um, you can set up an appointment through that intranet for tutoring um, experiences and um, you will have a tutor get back to you through that. Awesome, thank you so much, Melody. Um, Talisa, I'm gonna ask you this question. This person says, are there, is financial aid available Given everything that's happened this year um, with COVID-19 and you know, it seems like everything's been turned upside down. So can you help us understand, is there financial aid available and is there anything special uh, for education uh, majors that they should be aware of? Absolutely. Uh, financial aid is absolutely available, if not more now than ever. And that's because there's definitely a one with your education, um, usually when something like this happens with COVID. So, um, with undergraduate students, you would complete your FAFSA um, and that will determine what you qualify for. Um, some of the funding is based off your tax filings. And then within the state of Georgia, since all of our students are required to be Georgia residents with this program, you would also qualify for the GTEG, which is the Georgia Tuition Equalization Grant. It is a grant you don't have to pay back. You just have to be a Georgia resident for two or more tax filing years. And then you have also your direct subsidized and unsubsidized federal funds so for federal loans. So financial aid is definitely available and it can be an option for you. You would just need to complete your FAFSA. Great, thank you so much. And while I have you here, Talise, Brittany has a question for you, and this is about student teaching. So she wants to know what is the difference between field experience and student teaching? And also what exactly are you doing when you take field experience classes? Okay, great question, Brittany. So the difference between field experiences and student teaching is this. Field experiences happen while you're in the program in your classes. So for instance, if you're taking a math concepts class, while that class requires a field experience, you will go into an assigned public school and it may not be every week. It may be you know, a couple of times throughout your program, you will be engaging with those students, observing the teacher as she teaches her math lesson. And then by the end of that field experience, you will teach your own math lessons. So during that time, you will work on those math principles that should be embedded into a lesson. And then you'll teach your own, which will be observed by a university supervisor. And usually a principal or lead teacher will also sit in on your lesson. Um, now that's a field experience. Your student teaching is when you are getting real life, full-time work experience as the teacher. Um, it will be guided by whose, whose classroom you're in. However, you are, you are the full-time teacher for that particular class. Um, so that's the differences between the field experiences and the student teaching. Um, field experiences are not as often. Um, you have the five, uh, seven week course. So within that seven weeks, you may go over um, five times. Um, and to focus on that one specific subject area. The student teaching is full-time at the end of your program and you're teaching all subjects. Um, and that, that is your basically your class. That is your practice classroom to prepare you to move into your own classroom after graduation. Thank you, Talisa. And one follow-up question from Brittany. Can you teach, I'm sorry, can you choose the grade level for field experience and student teaching? 
you can definitely put it on your wish list. Um, but Brunel is going to make sure that you have a diverse experience because that's required by Georgia Professional Standards Commission. So for instance, um, you have three field experiences through the program, Brittany, and then you have your student teaching. Your grade levels cannot repeat, as well as the school location cannot repeat. Um, and they, they will make sure that you have an, an urban and a rural experience as well. So it's a funky question that goes into what's the best fit to make sure that you meet the needs of the state. But you can definitely say, you know, th these are what I prefer and we will try to make it happen if it falls within the parameters for the state. So if there's a specific grade that you just absolutely really, really, really wanna teach, I would say save it for student teaching um, because that's where you'll spend the most time in that grade level. Um, but you will not be locked into that one particular grade level throughout your field experiences. They will be uh, diverse. Okay, so it's going to be you can't repeat a great level between the field experiences and the student teaching. Awesome. Thank you, Talise. Um, I know that this is education is one of those things that there are a lot of um, requirements from the state and uh, Burnout does a really great job in ensuring that things are those requirements are met while also making sure that all of our students have a really great experience. So um, Brittany, I would encourage you to call the phone number that we've typed into the chat if you have further questions. Um, and our enrollment coaches can direct you to the, to the right person if you have more questions about how to, to request a specific grade area or, or whatever, or other preferences. So we have one more question. And um, if you have any other questions, please type them into the Q&A now. Otherwise, this will be our last one. And this one is for Melody. Melody, can you tell me, please, how much time a student can expect to work on assignments and, and school work a week. I know that a lot of our students are, are um, full-time adults. <laughs> so they have jobs and they have kids and they have bills. So how much time should they expect to, to spend each week on working on school? Yeah, and that's a, that is really a good question and one that we get often because um, students wanna make sure that they can, you know, fit this into their full-time schedules. Um, we always like to say spend like 15 to 20 hours a week. Um, that includes reading, that includes the assignments and the discussion boards. Um, treat it like it's a part-time job and most likely you will find yourself being very, very successful in, in the classroom itself. Um, the assignments are given through the syllabus. The syllabus is set out week to week. So week one through week seven. Um, I don't encourage students to look ahead. Um, you can finish your assignments during the week ahead of time. If you have one that's due on Wednesday, you want to complete it on Wednesday, uh, Monday, you can definitely do that. Um, but looking ahead in the syllabus kind of tends to stress students out because they're thinking they're gonna need more time than what it might actually take. And you can't finish the class ahead of time. So going week by week, spending about 15 to 20 hours um, a week in the classroom, on the assignments, on the readings, um, typically leads students down the road of success. They feel pretty good about that. The feedback that I get from my students is sometimes depending on the class, it can take a little bit less time because you're more familiar with the um, curriculum and what's being taught in that class. Other classes, you may spend a little bit more time because it's a little out of your realm of comfort. So about 15 to 20 hours, part-time job. Great, thank you, Melody. So we have one more question and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Talise, since you were speaking so much about field experience, I'm going to send this one back to you. Uh, thanks for being such a good sport and answering all of these questions. Are there any summertime field experience classes? Um, this person says they know that some schools are year round. Yes, you're right. Some schools are year round. Um, with Bernal, we do not have any summertime field experiences. Um, and that's because we use the public school system which is a requirement by the state. And as we all know, uh, school is out of session for the summer. 
thank God. <laughs> so there are no field experiences through the summer. Um, you'll have a fall and a spring experience uh, through the program. And even when it comes to student teaching, it will be either fall or spring for you. So um, within our bachelors in elementary education, as of right now, um, there aren't any, they're not planning for summer classes as well. Once you get through the program to a certain point, then most of your classes require that field experience. So due to how the calendar flows, um, at some point you will not have any classes through the summertime. So you actually get, you know, a little taste of how it is to be a teacher and having the summers off. Okay, thank you so much, Talise. I mean, that's probably the best part of being a teacher, right? Is getting the summer <laughs> off anyway. So it's like re real practice. Um, all right, so one last question. I know I keep saying this is the last question, but due to COVID, how will field experience work? So with, when it comes to COVID, um, the state is definitely looking out for um, any flunk, uh, fluctuations with the uh, positive case numbers. As of right now, they have not um, changed anything. However, the state as well as Bernal will make sure that all of our students are protected to its very best. We will follow all the parameters that, that the state sets forward. If things continue to increase, I'm quite sure there are gonna be some changes coming down the line, um, which will not affect uh, your ability to move through the program and graduate. Education will continue to flow. Graduations will continue to happen. Certifications will continue to be administered. Um, but I'm, we are just waiting for um, any notifications to be passed down from the state. And it's kind of a wait and see. And also, um, you know, with this being the first semester, schools are opening back up for the fall. Um, the state is keeping a very close watch on the numbers and parameters. So we will make sure that our students are very well taken care of and still the needs for the state are being met. So it's kind of a wait and see. And then as you get closer to that, then we will know. Um, so for students that are starting in January, you won't have a field experience needed then. Your first experience will come next year fall. So as of you know, right now, you're still one year out practically from even having to go into a classroom. So that gives COVID a chance to do what it's gonna do. And hopefully, as we all pray, to decrease and for the state to put out whatever regulations and mandates they have, they're gonna set forward. Um, and then, you know, as you progress through then student teaching and that gives, that gives this, chance, this, chance, this thing a chance to die down along the way. Yep, COVID definitely is keeping us all on our toes. So it's um, we're doing our best to make sure that the, your education is uninterrupted. And so, of course, if you have questions about it, feel free to call our coaches and we can help you through that. So that's about all of the time we have for our Q&A session. Thank you to everyone who has participated and asked questions. Thanks to everybody for attending today. As a reminder, classes start next on January 11th. And as we said before, time sure flies when you're sitting around in your house doing nothing. So what we recommend is that you submit your application now, or if you're in the process of applying, finish your application now. That, that way, by the time Thanksgiving and the holidays roll around, you've got your ducks all lined up for the new year and you don't have to worry, any, worry about anything. You can just enjoy your holidays. Um, so if you have questions about that application process, please call our coaches at 888. 867-2163 or email them at success at ags.bernau.edu. And again, those uh, that contact information is in the chat. So we will leave this slide up for a couple more minutes uh, so that you can write that down very quickly. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much again for joining and we hope to see you in January.